This little video is a meditation on the way the length of a human lifetime makes geological time difficult to comprehend. What are our feelings about what makes up catastrophe compared to what are the normal events of a uniform timeline? Very big events happen infrequently, geologically so infrequently that people often can't plan for them or even imagine them. We're starting on the short end of the time scale, just a human lifetime, about 100 years, and looking at the range of natural disasters that might happen over a person's lifetime. A medium-sized volcano and a small meteoroid strike happens on average every 100 years. Unlike those events, earthquakes occur at the upper end of their strength scale a lot more often. Earthquakes over magnitude 8 happen on average every year, shown here in these little blue waves, and they begin to look uniform even over a person's lifetime. Looking at a thousand years instead of a hundred years, the events that seem like catastrophes on a hundred year time scale begin to look pretty uniform, and a larger volcano and a larger meteoroid impact appear on average every thousand years. Zooming out by another power of 10 to 10,000 years, the average largest volcano and meteoroid impact on this time scale would have very serious global consequences. Notice also that over the last 11,000 years until the very recent past, climate has been very steady, but that's changing now. On a 100,000 year timeline, catastrophes occur on a scale never recorded in human history. We're getting out past the time of the last glacial maximum. On a million year timeline, we can't even see the events of a human lifetime or the thousand year events or the 10,000 year events anymore. They've become the stuff of the average repetitive course of events. And yet we've traversed less than one one thousandth of the age of the earth. On a 10 million year timeline, we've moved, we think, beyond even the largest volcanoes produced by subduction zones and into another kind of larger but less frequent volcanism. Suddenly now, as we get away from the 10 million year timeline up to 540 million years, the timeline doesn't look fractal anymore. We're not getting yet another larger eruption and larger impact. Now we're looking at the time of the rise of multicellular life. Those five brown bars I've drawn here mark the five largest extinctions in the history of multicellular life. Uh, one was caused by a meteorite strike, the probably that's the end of the dinosaurs. Two probably caused by volcanism, and the causes of the other two are unknown. Were there other extinctions earlier in the timeline? Probably, but uh, there was so little life around that the extinctions are hard to find by searching for fossils and their absences. And now we're looking at the entire timeline of the history of the Earth. I love this view. Here, we're not trapped in the set of nested timescales anymore, where each longer timescale has a fresh, larger set of catastrophes. Here the timeline has the familiar arc of a human life with a beginning and a development and where we are now in the complex midlife of our planet. 